And now, the Sleephawk Worldwide Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brandon Staten and Tyler Hensbro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sleephawk Worldwide Podcast. This is Sleep Dog with the Big Hulk. What's up, everybody? It's the Big Hulk. We got a great episode. Uh, we got a tournament recap, and we're going to talk about a, a very interesting run from it. The NC State Wolfpack. We got a special guest, uh, Brian Rosenthal, that's going to come on and break it down from his perspective as a Wolfpack fan. Uh, so let's get it. Let's go sleep, guys. This day in history, we got the Masters on. You guys probably thought you're going to log in here and figure out what happened. The Masters, uh, uh-uh. uh. We're going to go uh, two weeks old Duke Car- or uh, State Carolina rivalry. We're going to dig deep into that and and mainly states run. Man, I'm really kind of proud of us branching out here, Big Hawk. Um, but yeah, we got Brian uh, with us here today, owner of Raleigh Pro League, former just stellar NC State tennis player, and we're gonna we're gonna lay the we're gonna you know you know Tyler's into the paddle sports now, so you know I think that there's where the connection lies. Old Sleep Dog, he uh we joined a club, and so I'm, I I got to get into the paddle sports myself, so we can touch on that um a little bit. The main reason we wanted to bring Brian in is because honestly, Big Hawk sends me a text. He's like, hey man, I got a guy, State fan great trash talker let's have him on i was like yeah let's do it so uh, excited to uh and and even brian's got a little little, uh he's got a little connection to to chapel hill we'll get into that too but brian man thanks for jumping on um this is gonna be an interesting conversation because we're a little late to it but i think this is a good story you know nc state had a great run i think even if you hate it which we do uh on this side you admit that you know what? I don't know if I can say I was pulling for NC State, but I certainly enjoyed watching it, right? And it was interesting to see, um, you know, how it was going to go. Didn't end, I think, the way that that probably State fans wanted to. But I mean, looking back, what a hell of a time, a fun time it must have been to be a State fan. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for having, uh, you know, being willing to talk to us about about it. And um, yeah, we're going to dive in. Yeah, I appreciate you guys bringing me on. It was a magical. Three weeks here uh, for state fans. I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, drive up to D.C. for the Virginia game. Uh, I want to credit my Carolina friends for pushing me to go because without their, without their, uh, you know, pushing, I probably would have <laughs> stayed home and said, ah, we're probably not going to beat UVA. Their defense is, you know, always collapses on us, even though we did take them out earlier this year. But was there for the UVA game and then uh, got out to Phoenix for the Final Four for this. Uh, what I would say the greatest three weeks for uh, NC State athletics history, at least from where I sit. So uh, can't wait to dive into it with you guys. It was, uh, again, uh, probably something I'll never forget. I get to tell my grandkids, uh, you know, several years from now. Yeah, and that's the part I think it gets overshadowed a little bit now is like, it, it, like it's, at least I'm sure State fans remember this. But, you know, as you brought that up, I was like, you know what? It wasn't just the, the tournament run. I mean, hell, they ran the table in the NC, I mean, in the ACC tournament obviously just to get there. And I think at this point, because of the, you know, the, they became like this American T America's team for a while, which is also a super interesting standpoint from a Carolina fan, just watching state, not only just kind of win like games, but also like win the hearts of people. And we're like, dude, come on, man. But you know, I think anybody like Tyler said it a thousand times, like DJ Burns is a fun player to watch. Right. Um, but yeah, they ran a table five games and then what did they win? Five more in the, in the NCAA? Four. Was it five yeah, I four? think it was four. four. Yeah, yeah. Four. four. Yeah. I mean, what a streak to go on. So, um, I don't know, Big Hawk, like what are your thoughts about kind of, cause again, we haven't talked about since the tournament was over. Um, I had a kid. So guys, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm touch and go on these episodes these days. So sorry we missed last week, but you know, give us a rundown, Tyler. Um, what you think. You know, general of the tournament and, and specifically like, you know, obviously NC State's the storyline for our audience and uh, and what your thoughts are. Well, first of all, I want to talk about the ACC tournament. Uh, actually, the first game they played Louisville and I actually mm-hmm. tuned in uh, to that game because I thought there was a chance that NC State was going to lose. And I've always said that there's a lot of pressure on teams that play Louisville because they're so bad, they don't want to be that team that loses to them. And they've had such a bad year, but they kept making their run. And then everyone kept talking about, can this team still win 
being playing this many games and being this tired, can they sustain their level of play? And they did, and they kept surprising everybody. And, you know, they won the AC turn, ACC tournament, got some momentum, went into the NCAA tournament, and some things worked out. They didn't have the toughest path, but as Carolina fans, nobody saw NC State having the best end of the year or making this run and having a better ending than the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils. And the most surprising thing to me about, I would say, this was it was a doomsday scenario. Duke plays UNC in the lead eight for a chance to go to the final four. And everyone had this narrative whether NC State was too exhausted to keep doing it. And they went to the final four. And I know a lot of Carolina fans like the run. They started to get on the uh, bandwagon. But like myself, I love watching DJ Burns. There's no scenario where I will pull for NC State. And that's why we have Brian on right here. We want to talk about what he felt and what it feels like to make a deep tournament run again uh, for NC State. And does this bring them back to the table as, you know, kind of one of those powerhouses? Will they build momentum off of this? Brian, what are your thoughts and what did you think during this whole run? Well, you touched on, you know, our path to the Final Four, and I think it was very matchup dependent. We take a look at the Sweet 16. Marquette has a great backcourt, but they don't have a great front. So we do have the better front court with DR and Burns. Same thing with Filipowski in the Elite Eight. I felt like Burns could bully Filipowski. Our guards just had to somehow match the backcourt of Duke, and we did. So the path was there. We got a little bit lucky with our draw. Marquette, still a really good team. Kolick, probably the best guard maybe in the country. But we still took took care of business. Um, as far as the tournament run goes, you know, I, I don't – I don't even know how to compare it to anything that I've seen in, in really in the last several years. I mean, you can make an argument was George Mason's run more magical, maybe, but at the same time, NC State has this fan base that is so much more hungry. No offense to the guys up in uh, in, mm-hmm. in Northern Virginia and even VCU was Shaka Smart as the 11 seed, uh, you know, going back when they lost to KU. But I just I think I look at this team and I say to myself that um, dead in the water. Starting in late January, things got really murky with this team. It was a pretty good team early on, not a great team, but a good enough team to Mm -hmm. say, hey, I think we're going to be a four or five seed in D.C. for the ACC tournament. The only teams that I looked at that are probably going to be seeded higher than us at the end of January were Duke, Carolina, and likely Clemson. I thought we were as good as Virginia. I thought we were as good as other teams that were seeded in the four or five hole, which I think were Pitt and Wake Forest. But we took Mm -hmm. took a plummet. Um, you know, a lot of folks wanted to blame Keats. There were, there was no culture. There was no, it was just, it was just ugly. These were guys that were not playing well. And uh, somehow it clicked down one in the first round of Louisville at halftime. You, you thought things were really going astray then. And then boy, they ran Syracuse out of the gym the next night. And then the Duke game, when they beat Duke, I started to sense, wait a minute, you know, yes, I'm gonna. We're, we're going to Virginia. Excuse me, we're going to DC to watch this Virginia game. I was so excited, but I just felt like there was a spark after the Duke game, and uh, it's really tough to make sense of what transpired. The number ten seed in the ACC going to the Final Four, but what it brings to the table now is I think it it probably creates more buzz from the Duke Carolina side to take us more serious. It's great, you know. I don't think Carolina and Duke fans were running to their to their Ticketmaster app to buy tickets at the PNC to come to Raleigh. Well, maybe they will next year, and maybe that's going to create just a better situation for the fan base, and that's going to want kids to come to NC State. So this saved Keats, and I think this saved our program going into the right direction because it was going south very quickly in the month of February and March. Yeah, dude, it was – I mean, it's really just kind of incredible to think about – what was almost, I mean, this is, and the funniest thing is to me is, you know, this sort of corresponds with all of the, um, you know, legal gambling uh, happening yeah. in North Carolina, all these sports books opening up. And then all of a sudden you got these rabid state. I know several people that posted on, 
<laughs> on like whatever that they pick state in these like long shot scenarios and they're taking all these bonus bets and just cashing them. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy because it was like, I mean, and I, I mentioned that because it's like the definition of a long shot, the, you know, the betting odds and they just kept beating the odds. Um, it's, it brings up a ton of questions like, you know, Duke in particular, like, kind of they're the ones on the outside looking in here in a, in a really bad way, in my opinion, if you kind of step back and look at where they are. Um, but, you know, it, it Keats is an interesting topic I want to get into. Burns is an interesting topic. Um, and really, but the thing that that I think is is really interesting is like what it speaks to about the ACC, right? And, and Tyler and I talk about this a lot. And of course, going forward, you don't really know what's going to go on with the conferences. But, you know, I remember when we were starting to look at the ACC um, and, you know, two or three episodes ago and, and, and we were looking at Carolina and their quad quad wins. And, you know, Tyler mentioned to me that I think, I think state was a three or four. I think there were three, right? They were Uh, never a four. They had to been a three. Yeah. Okay. And then, but I look, I remember because you mentioned Brian, how they were a good team early in the season. And I, and when Tyler told me they were a quad three win, I was like, state's a quad three. Cause at the time they were a little higher in the rankings. I was like, I don't, they don't feel like a quad three to me. And then of course they kind of went on a, you know, went into a slump and, you know, we're, forget- but you know, the same kind of thing with Clemson. And I said this before the tournament, right? Like everybody is sort of, nobody's paying attention to Clemson. I'm like, dude, Clemson was eight in the country early on. And, you know, they, they, and look, I get that teams are ranked and then they're not as good as their rankings as the season goes on. But those two teams weren't in that scenario. And, and what happens is I think the ACC just gets consistently overlooked. You know, we saw that in the number of teams we got into the field. Um, and, and then they just perform in, in, in March because, you know, the conference is, is competitive. And I think, um, you know, I think if I'm a state fan, I start there, right? It's like not about, hey, how do we get to the final four again? I mean, be realistic. It's hard to do no matter what, you know, uh, you don't just catch lightning in a bottle and then, and then ride it out. But I think what it does do, um, is helps you recruit against, you know, Virginia's and Virginia Tech's and Wake Forest and Georgia, you know, it kept, you're not probably going to get Cooper flag, right? Or Zion. But you are going to start getting guys and maybe in the top 100 to come to that program so that you can build a team over time, which again, as we've kind of talked about, I think that's the path in college basketball. Everybody wants the stars, um, you know, but in college basketball, I think you have to make a decision these days. Either you want to, you want to have the stars and send dudes to the NBA or you want to build a team and win. And I think this gives NC State the opportunity to do the latter. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that we're never going to probably land the names that you just alluded to, right? But it has to bring some sort of blood in the water attention to these next star recruits. And we got, you know, we got one of the guys from Louisville in the portal, which I think if he had the Mm -hmm. right system and probably a better coach and a better culture, he would have been more of a star in the ACC, maybe a second team or so. We're excited about Mm -hmm. that. But I don't think NC State was going to attract – these names without this run. And Mm -hmm. then now I think these kids believe in Kevin Keats and the system. They believe in this polarizing figure. I could be the next DJ Burns. I mean, I don't think there has been a more Mm -hmm. polarizing figure uh, in the field of 68 in in the last several years in this tournament. I I just, I don't know. I mean, DJ Burns received Mm -hmm. more attention and the NIL money and the positive uh, social media content that came out of DJ Burns is unprecedented. So uh, this this is it. I mean, now this will sh- this is a measuring stick, in my opinion, for Kevin Keats. If you cannot build something somewhat consistent over the next two or three years, are you really mm-hmm. that guy? I mean, because NC State now should be in a position to be a four or five seed in the ACC tournament. You know, I think for a couple of years to come, we should be able to build yeah, on what has transpired in the month of March here in 2024. If not, then you know, obviously. Kevin Keats deserves a lot of chances now. And, um, you know, there's no stopping him at this juncture with all of the, uh, you know, the, the, the contract restructuring. And of course, the first final four coach in NC State since Jimmy B in 1983. So Kevin Keats is safe. Now let's, let's, let's prove it a little more. Let's see what you can do with what you have created, which was a phenomenal run. So that's the question mark. I think that state fans have is what are we going to do with this? And hopefully it is what I just mentioned, you know, realistically. Get us on the 3-4 line in the ACC tournament. Get us on that 5-6 line in the big dance. 
I think we're okay with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I want to talk about Keats real quick. Uh, the one thing about these conference tournaments that prepare you for the NCAA tournament is the short turnaround. <laughs> and I think – I hate conference tournaments, but I think when you play – and then you have to make a quick turnaround and you have to scout and prepare for a team uh, that you're going to play the next day and you don't know that, it kind of engages the team. But also with NC State, uh, you know, Keats had talked about there wasn't a lot of practice time uh, in between the games in the ACC tournament because they played and they were tired. They just didn't have the time, but they still prepared for, you know, whoever they are going to play. It was just a quick turnaround. And in my mind, I thought, well, there wasn't a lot of coaching uh, being done during that time because they didn't have a lot of practice. And I think sometimes teams look for answers and they try to dig in and they overthink it and they overcoach. And what it looked like NC State, they just went out there and started hooping. Yeah, they were smart and they had tactical plans. They weren't overcoaching, but they got out there and just started having fun. And the one thing I want to talk about with Keats is, NC State, they've been looking for somebody to solve the issues ever since I was in school. You look at Herb Sendek, uh, Sidney Mm -hmm. Lowe, Mark Godfrey, and now Keats. And I think Keats has to capitalize on this momentum and this situation uh, because, listen, he's going to be there for a few more years after what he did this year. Uh, What are your thoughts on Keats? What do NC State fans think of him? And, you know, it – I, I, I disagree with sleep a little bit just because NC State has a history and they have some of those players. I think there's going to be some NC State alums that are going to try to talk about, let's get some NIL packages. We're hungry, and we want to go and get these big names. And I think maybe some recruits will fall for that. And, and to piggyback on that question, because that's what I was thinking, is like, what does this do now? Because that's the X factor, right? Now the alums get excited. Right. And start start pumping because you're, you're right. I mean, look, dude, maybe we're too close to the sun and we think NC State's fan base is somehow more, you know, rabid than than other schools that are, you know, kind of midway through their conferences. But I mean, NC State's got a loyal fan base and I got to imagine there's some money. I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I'm going to speak for a lot of people that nobody was excited to have Kevin Keats return as we approached that tournament in D.C. I mean, listen, you know, underwhelming is a fair word to say over his tenure. Uh, One NCAA tournament leading up to this year got run out of the gym last year as an 11 seed by the six seed uh, Creighton Blue Jays, who were a very good team. So, you know, obviously that was a tough matchup in Denver uh, last year in 2023. So we felt like the buyout wasn't that extreme with all the money that possibly can come in. The Wolfpack Club is, I think, it's a great fundraising organization. I think there was – Plenty of money, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong uh, to, to get him out of there. I, I, I don't know how you cannot want him back. I get there are some people that probably, you know, did not want this run to transpire. But obviously that would be contradiction, right? Of course you want to see your team reach the Final Four, win the ACC championship. It just really comes down now. Now he needs the guys like Julius Hodge and some of these players from the past to really get on his back support this guy, raise some money because he's staying and we need NIL to compete. We need these guys to come to Raleigh and he's not leaving. And I, you know, we keep saying, I keep saying this, but you know, whether you like mm-hmm. him or not, and that was probably 85% of our fan base going into the AC tournament, they didn't like him. We were done. I mean, he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I guess decent coach obviously had some good years at UNCW, but I think it was time to move on from Kevin Keats. So now it's time to jump on this gentleman's back and help him out, raise money. Mm-hmm. And it's also going to have to be from the players from the past as well to really create a culture. I, I don't know what the Wolfpack men's basketball alumni family truly is. I, I don't know if they have great rapport or great relationships, but uh, it's going to help. And I'm sure Carolina does, and I'm sure Duke does. And I, hopefully that Kevin Keats embraces it and our former players do as well. Yeah, and let me just say something. Down. It's a lot easier to coach a team when you have people excited about you coaching that team. And it's a lot different when you have an AD that's frustrated, you have a fan base that's trying to question every move you have. I feel like that right now has been taken away from Keats, and he's got a lot of momentum. And so he's got a lot of support. Uh, So I do see this kind of like – I could see, you know, NC State, you know, getting more hungry. And, Brian, the question I have for you – 
and I want to talk about the rivalry right now um, because during this run, I thought it was cool, and there came a point where right before the Final Four, I couldn't pull for you guys. I couldn't, and it was a doomsday scenario. I've talked about that, Duke State, for a chance to the Final Four. An NC State fan asked me as I was walking around at a pickleball tournament, hey, you going to watch the game? I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch it. And they're like, you going to pull for State? I said, there's no scenario where I'll ever pull for NC State. And uh, she's like, really? I was like, absolutely not. You guys are our rival. I won't be pulling for you. I'll watch it. I'll never be pulling for you guys. And I even said, if you guys played Satan, I probably wouldn't be pulling for you. <laughs> and, I, and Brian, is there ever a scenario where you'll pull for UNC basketball? I know your wife is a, a Tariel. Uh, but my question is, it's good for the rivalry, though. Right. Well, listen, there's two different ways to look at this. If I'm betting or not betting. No, I mean, like that. I mean, listen, you know, <laughs> if we're betting on Carolina, I've been the biggest Tar Heel fan in this whole damn town. I can tell you that when you guys play Michigan State, I had a pretty large wager on Carolina. So, uh, no, all joking aside, you know, I think a lot of people look at it with different lenses. And I think I was one of the rare ones uh, as far as hating a school more than the other. Definitely was Duke over Carolina for me. Um, I didn't grow up in North Carolina. And I think that's what it starts with, right? North Carolina mm -hmm. NC State is based on a few things. And I touched upon this a couple of days ago with Tyler. I'll talk about this with your listeners and sleep. Is, uh, and he'll, he'll know this because, you know, he's, he's in the area. It starts, and I don't want to get political, it starts with politics, right? It starts with politics mm -hmm. from the get-go years and years ago. It's probably tamed down a little bit. Um, you know, we're the red school, they're the blue school, right? Uh, let's start with that. Mm -hmm. The rejection feeling, not only in the media, but the rejection potentially of getting into Carolina. A lot of students in North Carolina may have been Tar Heel fans. They wanted to go to Carolina. They got rejected. They ended up in NC State, and I feel like that is just, it just crushes them, right? It just crushes them emotionally. So they, they, they come to NC State and they really hate Carolina more. Um, for me, it was always Duke. And it's just because of the situations I put myself in by going to NC State Duke games at Duke more than NC State at Carolina and just dealing with the obnoxious fan base there. I'd never seen anything like that before at Cameron. I mean, there, I love trash talk. I mean, Tyler can tell you that watching me play pickleball. Mm -hmm. And there's also a time where you just – you take it to another level by in, with insults, mm -hmm. right? Like the, the insults yeah. of us being uh, an educational uh, debacle in their opinion, right? Like our school is called – it's big yeah. high school. We're the big high school in, in North Carolina. <laughs> so, you know, as I grow up, it, it for me, I don't have that hate towards Carolina. I'm not a – North Carolina native. My wife went to Carolina. Mm -hmm. I live in Chapel Hill. I have great friends that went to Carolina, but I get why our fan base hates them. Again, politics, rejection from the media, rejection from not getting in, and it's not going away, which is healthy, though. Now to go back to, mm -hmm. is it healthy? Yes. Like, we should not ever pull for Carolina or Duke, right? We should get along. We should be <laughs> civil with each other, but they don't mm -hmm. pull for each other, you know, with fan bases when it comes to, you know, these big robberies, whether it's, look at Ohio State, Michigan. I mean, they can't even say the names of each other's school. It's Ohio and the school up north. And I feel like we desperately, we're hungry for Carolina to take us serious like Michigan does Ohio State. So maybe what mm -hmm. transpired over those last three weeks will give us some hope that you guys will take us more serious. And I think you should, because if you look at football, you know, I, I don't know. What, what are we going to say here? I mean, this is a problem in Chapel Hill, right? We don't talk yeah. about that. We don't that. talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just getting ready yeah. to say, I feel like it's really sports. It no, it's just basketball. Because, yeah, absolutely. Like right now, it is. I, th I think, I think. look, especially given the, the, the talent that Carolina has had, I think NC State has the upper hand, and it's absolutely a rivalry right now because State comes in as underdog time and time again and beating Carolina with the best quarterback arguably in the nation for the last, what, four or five years. Yeah, I think I think there you have to take it seriously, and, and that's the question I have is, like, can, can basketball sort of start to pull them? Because, yeah, again, 10 years ago, like, State was just as bad as we were. I mean, it was a rivalry, but, you know, 
Um, now you bring up you bring up a lot of good points on on that, and um, you know, I think for me, I'm actually with you, Brian. Like I, I understand that you know, very historically, it was Carolina, Virginia, and then you know, you know, probably my early years as a human being, it was it was more uh, Carolina, NC State. Duke was irrelevant until K came along, and all that sort of stuff started to transpire. But you know, in my sort of like life it's been Duke. I mean, we just hated Duke. Right. And, um, so while I won't say I was necessarily pulling for either team, I certainly, if you had to put a gun to my head and ask me who I wanted to win, I'd, I would have picked NC state for sure. Um, I'm with you. It's, um, it's, uh, and, and I think the other thing too, about the rivalry, it, it's, it's so it's petulant, you know, there's this whole thing about the, not our rival thing, right? Come on. I mean, you, you, if, if we were closer to East Carolina, I mean, East Carolina would be our rival. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's a location thing. And, um, you know, I think for me, it's a little fiercer with NC State because everybody has so many people. I don't know. I know a couple people went to Duke. Thank God I don't know more. <laughs> Yeah. Right. But like state in Carolina, like we all know people that yeah. went to the other place. We're friends and family with these types of people. And like it is it's it's um it's a it's kind of a, you know, big kid, little kid sort of scenario in most people's minds. And um, but it's a it's a it's a fun rivalry. And I think um, I think this is only going to enhance it. The only other thing I want to slip in there is you mentioned the, the whole thing about Keats and the fan base. I mean, it wasn't as bad by any means. But, you know, Carolina two, three seasons ago goes to the final four. And next year they missed the tournament altogether with the same roster. And like there were some people that were like Hubert Davis ain't the guy. And then turn around and, you know, have the season we had today with a lot, or this year with a lot lower expectations. Everybody loves a winner. Right. And so um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Keats can can keep up that momentum. But I agree with you. Like the world is not a perfect place like he was up, he was down, he was way down, and then he's back up, and he's earned the opportunity like to to keep going. So it's it's a, it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens for them for them next season. But yeah, I think I think it's definitely good for the for the rivalry. No, I I just want to say I think it's great for the rivalry, and the reason I say that is because the buzz that UNC versus Duke creates. I mm-hmm. think if we get that somewhat kind of momentum and that hype towards NC State, that's going to be great for the ACC. And everyone says the ACC is top-heavy. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, we're always there, uh, you know, in the tournament making these runs. I don't care what other people say. We will never get the credit we deserve. But you know what? Now we got NC State, and if they can become relevant, we can see this rivalry just kind of explode. Mm -hmm. And also, let's not talk about Duke. They have taken a big step backwards. They're Mm -hmm. not dominating the way they used to. Filipowski cannot handle physicality, and I've said that all year. And, uh, you know, Brian, I want to just say, like, back in the day, NC State and UNC might have been a bigger rivalry than Duke and North Carolina just because of what state, their history, and what they did. I'm talking about when Valvano was there. Brian, I want to get your opinion on that. Well, I was going to say that's probably when dinosaurs roamed the earth. I I mean, I don't remember the last time (laughs) when when, when, when Carolina Duke meant more than Carolina State to the global perspective, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it was – I mean, this is is pre-K. This is Jimmy B's heyday. I mean, this is – it's a lot. It's a lot to, you know – process to believe that is the case. Um, I want it to be back. Uh, I would love to see NC State Carolina uh, more as relevant as Carolina Duke. But to answer you, you know, answer your question, Tyler, I mean, I don't I don't think it's there. Uh, it will help. I mean, final four run helps. But I think, you know, it's it, I'm from Florida. Right. And growing up, Carolina Duke still meant something, you know, there. Right. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we 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 in South Florida were so excited to somehow, you know, find it on our I don't remember how we found it back then, right? T V back in the nineties, but like, oh my God, like Yeah, rabbit ears. I mean like Leitner, Montross, I mean, I don't even know how we found those games, but we did. You try to do anything you could to find that. And I didn't know what NC State was. I really didn't until the mm-hmm. recruiting letters came in. Like I'm just like, yeah, I've heard of mm-hmm. NC State. I know they're in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but um, I still think that's the case west of the Mississippi still until this run. I mean, mm-hmm. leading up to this run, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like if you surveyed 100 
average basketball fans, I don't know if 60% really have a clue of the history. I mean, not even the history. Don't I'm not even asking that hard of a question, but can you name one player for the Wolfpack? The yeah, answer is no. Yeah, yeah. And so we got a long right. way to go. And I'm, I'm realistic on that. We got a long way to go before NC State Carolina is going to mean anything to the equivalency of Carolina Duke. But we're in the right path. Here. And here's what I want to say about the Duke thing, because I have what I'm what's going to be perceived as a hot take here. I think that that Duke is more of a brand now than it is a contender. I really do. If you look back at the, the I mean, they consistently come in with these big recruits and they underperform and they drastic they, their team. I'm not going to say that like NC State was quote unquote a better team than Duke this year. I mean that's that's a reach, but I am saying that like Duke was 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 drastically overstated all year long. Like I, you know, Filipowski and McCain just went to the NBA. I don't know McCain to me, and and I'm sure he's going to get drafted in the first round, but he's not a first round pick to me. He's a guy that needs to stay two maybe three more years to put his game together. He's a good player. But like he's not Zion, he's not Gerald Henderson, he's not you know JJ Redick. Like I mean, these guys that they like, this Cooper Flag kid, you know, is is supposed to be outstanding, right? But like, I don't know, man. I just Duke is not the type of team that is. I mean, you know, they went to the Elite Eight, okay, but you know the the path sort of like things fell their way to get there. I mean, the eye test. Just hasn't been there for me. And look, I'm a very biased source, right? So I just think that the door is open. And I'm ta- not talking about next year. I'm not talking about, and I'm not talking about the Duke Carolina rivalry getting replaced by Duke and NC State. But I'm saying of all the teams on on the slate here, like Duke's going in the wrong direction. I think Carolina's wobbled a little bit, right? And you're going to expect that with these huge changing of the guards and, and as a, at the head coaching position and like NC state is definitely on the rise. So, um, you know, I, I, it's an interesting thing when you look at the, the sort of three teams, because look, man, like if Duke comes in next year with this kid, Cooper flag, who a lot of people are saying is the best recruit since, I mean, hell, maybe LeBron, everybody loves this kid, at least since Zion. Yeah. Right. And, you know, if they, if they, don't make a run at it with this kid. I think you're going to continue to see people sort of lose a little bit of interest in in the Duke sort of mantra, um, which is that they are somehow elite because they're not an elite team anymore. So anyway, that's my two cents on Duke, and 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 it just is an interesting thing that I think we can all get along. Before you get out of here, Brian, I know we 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 told you we're going to keep you here for one amount of time, and we always we always keep yeah. people longer, but like. Let's do a look like a little bit of shit talk, Tyler. Like, tell me what you really think, Brian, about Carolina. I mean, like, it doesn't have to be visceral, but like, I mean, I, you man, know, listen. What don't you like what, about? Carolina? Well, I'll tell you. I'll give you an example. You know, two nights ago in Raleigh, NC State men's tennis. So this hits home, right? Play tennis at NC State. So this this means yeah. more to me than I won't say basketball, but it's up there. I mean, it's up there, right? I mean. You have Carolina fans are you get the wine and cheese label, right? And being a little obnoxious, but it's not okay for me to be obnoxious, right? <laughs> but I got into it. I got into it with some fans. You know, one uh, an older lady, and you know, she's very nice, perhaps. Uh, yeah, an older know, lady. Said, I love it. You're this a bully, and I said, I'm a bully. It's okay. It's okay for you to say all this rhetoric about our boys. But I can't say anything back. Your husband said, uh, shut up to me and some of my t- former teammates. It was alumni weekend. That's okay. But it's not okay for you. It's not okay for me to say anything bad. So we get that a lot. You know, we, 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 we get that a lot from Carolina fans at these games where it's okay. It's okay to say something wrong on your side, not okay for our side. It gets heated. It's good. But, again, it just just be smart about what you do. I mean, some of these state fans – and I, 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 even Carolina fans, I mean, just, they just go over the top with some ridiculous yeah. rhetoric. But that was, you know, I, again, I, I, I don't have this visceral hate. I, I'm just honest with you. I don't. I mean, I don't have visceral hate yeah. for Carolina. I live here. If I did, right. I wouldn't live here. I live a mile from campus. 
You know, I have a lot of respect for, for UNC. I mean, I, I have, I admire a lot of what they've done, you know, over the years in their athletics program. I'm not a biggest fan of some of their coaches. Not going to mention a coach that may be a racket sports coach, but he's a legend. He's a legend. I mean, the guy won, you know, national championship and the, the, their, their teams are always really, really good, you know, so you, you have to have a little bit of animosity towards these guys, but you know, I don't completely hate them. And listen, I let, let me just say this for, for state fans. You probably think I'm like Benedict Arnold. If they listen to the, you know, listen to your podcast, <laughs> I got, I, I got to say this. He's a Tar Heel now. Hey, many state fans. Now, listen he's to a this, Tar Heel now. Way, listen, so I, I try to separate <laughs> church and state. Like there's Carolina and there's Chapel yeah, Hill, there right? Go. Chapel Hill, yeah. all joking aside is an incredible town to raise a family to play, you know, sports, athletics. We got we got great facilities on the tennis side, the pickleball side, soccer fields for kids. I think the dining scene for such a small area of Chapel Hill mm-hmm. Carboro is phenomenal. So mm-hmm. let me just say this. I love Chapel Hill. But no, I don't love Carolina. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> I want to let Tyler get the last word in here because nobody gives a shit what I have to say. But here's my here's my my gripe with NC State is, and and this is probably the most like one sided point of view because I'm sure you're gonna listen to everything I'm about to say and tell me the exact same thing about Carolina fans. But every time I go to a game with especially a basketball game where NC State is involved, if the damn horn sounds too loud, they want yeah. a whistle. And I'm like, guys, come on. And they want it every time. And Keats wants to whistle worse than anybody. And I just like sometimes like we're all ridiculous. Like I can't tell you how many times I watch a game. And one of the funniest things I noticed earlier this year, and I told, said it on a prior pod, is I go to the game in the Smith Center and our camera guy is the most honest man in America. Because they, you know, how usually a home team will only play the replay if it's like, to your benefit, right? You know, they, they call a whistle and like, if they don't play the replay, everybody's like, ah, well, it must've been the right call. Well, I can't tell you how many times I was crying about a call at whatever game it was. And then they literally show the replay and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. That was a, that was not a foul. And, uh, but I like to think that at least I'm self-aware enough that like when I see that it wasn't, and I just don't ever feel the same way about NC state. I feel like, they're obnoxious over the whistle, but I have everything you just said. I feel like I live in Raleigh, yeah. right? I love Raleigh and, um, and I have a lot of really close friends that went to NC state. So as much trash as I talk, um, yeah, it all comes from a place of like, you know, wanting, I guess some good things to happen for them every now and then. What do you think? Sleep. Called? I'll just say this. Um, NC states are NC state fans are very passionate and, there's no bandwagon NC State. Like NC State, that's true. To be a fan of NC Ain't State, on the you've got yeah. to have a connection. You're an alumni or what? You have a reason why you're an NC State fan. And they're also <laughs> they've been in, in the dark for a long time. They're starting to get a little light. It's gonna be interesting how they handle that. A lot of people don't handle success well. <laughs> we'll see what uh, NC State fans do with that. And I would just want to touch on this. Duke has more bandwagon fans than any college basketball team out there. And also, Duke's fans, a lot of them are clueless. A lot of them have no connection. They're not alumni. Mm. They're just people, oh, I'm going to pull for Duke uh, just because it looks cool. It's a brand sleep, just like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. kind of like the Yankees. Uh, But I'll just say this. Um, State fans, you can tell that they're hungry just by my interactions with them and how they approach me uh, when, you know, I see an NC State fan – Sometimes they'll give me, hey, I want to take a picture, and then all of a sudden they'll start throwing the Wolfpack sign up. <laughs> I remember that. And that is – like I've, I've been having to deal with that ever since I've been in college. And it's like I absolutely hate when they do that because I stop, take my time, and then all of a sudden I feel disrespected. And I almost got in a fight with somebody at a, a hurricane a hockey game, game uh, <laughs> over that because uh, I really had to piss, and I was on my way to the bathroom, and I stopped to take a picture with him. He did that. Uh, yeah, but, he did the video, didn't he? He, he hit you with the video. Yeah. He said he wanted a picture and it started taking a video. Yeah, and, and usually kind of contain so myself, pissed. but I exploded. <laughs> and that's why I think NC State's fans are more passionate uh, than Duke fans. And uh, I admit, that's just my opinion on that. I really don't have a question, but that's my take, Brian. Good for that fan, by the way. Good Brian, tell us. Fan. I just want to <laughs> shout out to that fan at the Hurricanes game, by the way. <laughs> 
Brian, I'll we'll get you out of here on this, as Kornheiser likes to say, but tell us about the Raleigh Pro League, and then tell us about what, what we really came to learn about, which was your wife, who's yeah, a car heel, yeah. um, and what her specialty is. That's what anybody that's Yeah, what the ladies were definitely more uh, more frequent in, in uh, on Franklin Street than Hillsborough Street, so I found myself a Tar Heel. So it worked out. <laughs> it worked out pretty well. I'm very lucky. Very lucky to have married Megan. Yeah, Megan's a local artist. She's got a great... Great following on Instagram. If I can plug that little shameless plug. Uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Megan dot Rosenthal dot art on Instagram. She does a great job. Uh, she, she sells paintings on, uh, on her, you know, on her website. And of course she'll have a couple things at a variety of different stores in Chapel Hill and Raleigh. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll plug her first. Uh, we got to do that as a Carolina alumni, but yeah, I own the Raleigh pro league. So if you, if you like tennis, uh, it's a great platform. It, it's an alumni base, uh, of, you talk about Carolina, NC State. We got those. We got Duke. We got we got players from all over the country that land either as teaching professionals in the area or they, you know, they're bankers, right? But they played high level college ball, mm-hmm. perhaps Notre Dame, anywhere, right? UCLA. And so this this league was formed several years ago. I took it over last year. I used to be a player and sponsor, and now I've uh, put the rackets to the side and now moving on to the paddle and beating up the uh, one of your co-hosts there, Sleep. I'm not going to mention who it is. Uh, on a uh, consistent basis on the pickleball court, but um, don't but now, it. yeah. So it's really fun. Follow us on Facebook or Insta at Raleigh Pro League. Uh, the team action, which is the real main event, starts in the fall, September six. Uh, opening night, likely at North Hills Club, a club that we've had opening nights at uh, for several years. Uh, prior to that, a lot of spring and summer exhibitions of our players, much smaller scale. The team matches usually generate between two and 300 fans. That's pretty good. Um, I mean, that's wow. as big as college tennis. I mean, the, the, the level play is very good. Uh, it is. It's, it's a combination of men and women, some ladies doubles, mixed doubles, men's doubles out there. Um, if you're a Tar Heel, Wolfpack, Duke fan, you live in the area, you're going to see one of your former players out there competing. Uh, prize money on the line. Uh, we need sponsors. So, again, just uh, follow us uh, on Insta and Facebook, and you'll see some sponsorship information. But, yeah. Join us, and the first event is uh, going to happen. Our first exhibition is Friday, April 26th at Hope Valley Country Club in Durham. It's the opening night of the 24 calendar year for the Raleigh Pro League. Some great tennis, former uh, Notre Dame, Kansas players, TCU players out there. So it's going to be it's going to be a great show out there. No, that's awesome. I uh, we definitely got to got to get out there and check it out. Maybe in the in the North Hills debut, we can do a. A live a live pod, Tyler. Let's yeah, um, absolutely. Great. And um, uh, sleep. One thing I just want to say is, if you ever go to a pickleball court and you think it might be me and Brian out there just kind of chopping it up, you will definitely hear us. There's no better trash talker, and there is a lot of chaos whenever we play. And also, guys, if you're looking for a gift, maybe for a girlfriend, wife, whatever. Go check out Brian's wife's page. Uh, a lot of good gifts there. And go out and support the Raleigh Pro League. Uh, you'll see high-quality tennis. It'll be fun to watch. I appreciate it. Guys, I'm going to get my uh, – get them road Sleep, tennis are you ready to play? Back. I you had know, there's surgery. A dra- there's oh, a I'm draft ready, in August, man. We got you. Come on. Dude, it's hilarious. I joined this tennis club. Join yeah. North Hills Club. All right. They have a great yeah, swimming do. pool. All right. All is I've done yeah. is eat there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like they got literally one of the night. Nice, I've never been to another tennis facility, but it's got to be one of the nicest tennis facilities <laughs> anywhere. And racket sports. It's got Padel and it's got pickleball. And I just look at it while I'm walking on the treadmill <laughs> every now and then. I'm like, man, what a beautiful thing out there. I probably ought to go see what it looks like. And then all I ever do is go eat like club sandwiches and drink IPAs and watch TV. Um, so I we'll got to get, get out there. I got to get, we'll moving, get you out guys. there. It, and a shout out to North Hills club as well, where, where you, you just alluded to as a member, great racket sports program, the only Padel in the state of North Carolina. So that's an up, that's an upcoming wow. uh, sport, but you know, they got pickleball, they have tennis and uh, sleep. You're the next star at North Hills Club. I, I, I got to try. I'm telling you, man, I got to drop some baby weight, and I'm going to take a lot of people by surprise <laughs> this time next year. Dude, thank Thanks, you fellas. so much, Brian, for coming on. You Basically, this is our entire pod. So Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it, boys. Yeah, Love appreciate what you it, do. Buddy. Thank you so much for having me. Go Pack. Thanks, brother. Go Heels. Well, guys, I mean, we told him we were going to keep him on here for 20 minutes, and then we kept him on here for damn near the whole episode. That was a great uh a great guest, maybe the best guest we've ever had, Tyler. Dude, he's great, cool. man. Uh, uh, there's a like like racket sports are really here. Here's the honest truth. So for you guys, for those of you that don't know, if you don't follow Tyler that closely, I mean Tyler is like 
full on pickleball. All right. We joke about it a little bit. Tyler, you just turned actually turned pro, right? No, I didn't actually turn pro. I've got Trying a to pro. well, I would love to get to that level. Um guys damn near that level, I'm telling you. <laughs> well and I, I will say i I entered um I played my first pro open pickleball tournament in the PPA. Mm -hmm. I had a very good uh, partner, Hartland Jones, who just moved into the area. Uh, there's going to be a big facility called Pinpoint. I think he's going to be, you know, running the show there. So, you know, eventually in August or July, whenever that opens, you'll see him out there. He's a former pro, former pro pickleball player. And, uh, you know, we uh, he lives in Raleigh now. He can't really go at pickleball like he used to, starting a family. Mm -hmm. He's got to spend a lot of family time, mm -hmm. stay in the area, do that thing. And so we've been playing a lot together, and I was very fortunate to have a really good partner who, you know, played a lot at the pro level. And so we teamed up, and it was my first pro experience. And um, it was good for me. It was a good challenge. And, uh, you know, obviously I've got a lot of work to put in, which I love to do. And I would just say, and I know pickleball I always tell people, is I'm very passionate about pickleball. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's – and people will never understand why I like pickleball so much. And half the reason why I always laugh, I always tell people, I wish pickleball wasn't called pickleball because it just sounds so stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's like, you know, whenever I retired from basketball and I couldn't play, there was like a big, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what to do. I kind of felt lost. And so I remember the first time I ever picked up a paddle was with my brother uh, my older brother, who's very good at ping pong, I was like, "Hey, man, let's let's go get this pickleball thing a try." And it was like a hundred out. We just played singles. Mm -hmm. We were completely toasted, and I absolutely was addicted. And mm -hmm. then I started getting more and more into it, and I have just like, it's. I used to be really into golf, but there's mm -hmm. nothing that like I get so excited to go to the court. I've met right. I've met a lot of people. It's a great community. And there's a lot of weird people in pickleball, too. And there's a lot of good people. <laughs> and uh, the, the good thing about pickleball is anybody can play it. You can teach it mm -hmm. to anybody. And it's also a sport, one of maybe the only sports where you can play with the 70-year-old. Age doesn't really make all that big of a difference. You can combine everybody and they can play. It's very easy to pick up. But if you want to be very good, it's very hard and difficult to master. Like there is a lot mm -hmm. of nuances and a lot of skill once you start to progressing in pickleball. But if you just want to have fun, it's very easy to pick up. And it's also, it's a very cheap sport too. Like there's a lot of mm -hmm. parks, paddle, you know, go get you a paddle. All these other sports, you know, golf is expensive. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. why I think it's so cool. And it's outside and there's a ton of trash talk. I love mm -hmm. it. It's not like an uppity sport, tennis, golf, where you got to be quiet while everyone's, no, there's music blaring. There's trash talk, and you like the best thing in pickleball is a body bag. It's where you just directly <laughs> aim at the person in front of you. It's a low percentage shot, but if you tag them, you can just you let out a big roar, yeah, and it just it's like a Duncan basketball. I uh, I went to the PPA event at Cary Tennis um, facility uh, when when Tyler played. It was the first time I'd ever watched pickleball, and I'll be honest. Like at first, I think, dude, you made a good point about the name. I think the name probably uh, doesn't do it much justice, but it was like you can I guess I always thought it was like a bunch of people that were trying to be good at something like 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 the they have the um, cornhole leagues and stuff. Right. It's like, dude, like, OK, I understand that some people are really good at cornhole, but like, is that really an alpha uh, move there? But like with pickleball, dude. I watched some earlier matches between some older people, some guys, some girls, and it was sort of like, okay, what's the big deal? And then you watch the then you watch the pros play, and those guys, for example, uh, like that one kid that you played against, you mentioned had played you played tennis at UCLA. Mm -hmm. It was like it's a fast paced sport. Oh, like man. once you kind of figure out, and the best part I think is that the whole match was maybe maybe an hour. Oh yeah. So like tennis is if you if you aren't a tennis fan like i think a lot of people watch like big tennis matches and or, or more people than than that are average fans more average people will watch like fadal or uh nadal and federer right or whomever they are now djokovic and some other people 
Um, and tennis can be long and it can be like, you know, um, but pickleball, dude, I was really, really impressed. And I left there thinking like, I want to start playing mm-hmm. that. And, um, and to your point, you know, it feels inclusive if you're sort of like, like, dude, I'm, I'm overweight. <laughs> like my shoulder, I like tennis, but my shoulders destroyed and like just lifting a tennis racket over my head and swinging yeah. it creates problems. And as much as I'd like to play tennis, I can't because of that. Um, you know, pickleball is a different story. Yeah. And I'm interested in checking out Padel too. And I think a lot of people are probably like here in pickleball and they're like, maybe they don't want to get re- into it because of this, like, oh, it's just this fad or what have you. Like, nah, man, it looks fun. Yeah. It looks cool. And it's a great community. A ton of people play it. Um, and, you know, so the purpose of having Brian here was, you know, Tyler's in, in on, on all that. And, and, and I joined over there at a club. So I want to start playing that sort of stuff. And I know there's a lot of listeners here that are sort of like either playing it or wondering about it and like who cares what people think man get out there and <laughs> yeah and, pickle. and sleep i just want to say like uh to everyone who's never played pickleball and is a little intimidated just to pick up a paddle and go to the park there are so many of you that are just like when you go to a park there's so many beginners like just be like hey i know it's a little intimidating just be like hey i don't really know how to play there are so many people out there that are willing to teach you and help mm-hmm. you understand. And there's so many beginners. Uh, don't think that you've got to like go and get a bunch of skill or go work. Just go out to a park, pick up a paddle. There will be somebody there that's at your level, and that's the beauty of pickleball. Scoring was super interesting, too. It took me about uh, half the match to catch on to how it works, and then then boom, yeah. you're good. So you'll get it, believe um, me. Yeah. Uh, masters closing it out today, guys. We're, uh, like Scotty Tigers shot an 82 yesterday. Felt very sleep. Like, uh, I got Scheffler and Shambo and Homa and a couple other guys up near the top. More Um, by the time you guys hear this, you'll already know who won, but, uh, we don't yet. So we're not even going to talk about it, but, uh, yeah, NBA playoffs coming. There's a lot of stuff coming up here in the coming weeks. Uh, l- before I go shout out, I feel should have looked this uh, guy look his name up before, but I think his name is Chris. And if your name is not Chris, Chris, I'm sorry. I'll get it right and I'll say it next time. But he won our bracket challenge. Um, and uh, yeah, so so congrats. You beat I think the seven people that entered 25 yeah. brackets. Uh, Chris, so. hey, just the most usually the least knowledgeable. They finish first in these bracket <laughs> challenges. Me and Sleep probably finished dead last. So. Uh, yeah, actually, you were, one of yours was up there. Chris <laughs> sent us a, a message oh, never on Instagram. It said this was the best day of his life. <laughs> so, Chris, buddy, like, congrats, Chris, look, man, congrats. I, th- I hope it's Chris. I, I'm working from memory and very little sleep. But, buddy, regardless, you got to get out more, man. Like, if your best day of your life is winning a sleep hawk worldwide, I mean, hell, hats off to you, brother. But come on, pal, let's uh, let's see if we can't spruce things up for you over before we get into the next. Um, next tournament good job man he picked a lot of he was like in the 99th percentile in the espn shout out but we'll get your uh, prize pack out to you here uh sometime this week maybe mm-hmm. all right and uh shout out to jimmy's get your crab cakes man we're going to the to the uh jimmy's seafood open on the 22nd guys more to oh, yeah. more to come about that but i'm telling you what an event mm-hmm. you got anything else big hawk stay safe stay safe mm-hmm.